What up YouTube? This is Steven and welcome back to another video. And in this video, I want to share an article that I found while browsing around on the internet. And the article um, is about Miss Tomomi Kahara and kind of like it gives more um, insight into a turbulent time period in Tomomi's life as well as her career. And I think this is very important to share this particular story um, because it's good to see people go through tough situations and come out on the other side, you know, as a survivor and also as a winner. You know, her being able to turn a breakdown into a breakthrough, you know. So I think it's important to share this story. All right. So the title of this article is Kahara Tomomi. Fallen Star Hits Rock Bottom After Meteoric Demise. And it was published in a publication called Mainichi Japan on July 6, 2007. So I'll read the article and give my thoughts and opinions as I go. And as well, after reading the article, I'll give a few more thoughts and opinions. So, with that being said, here we go. Alright. Um, Tomomi Kahara, once labeled the Cinderella of Japanese showbiz because of her meteoric rise to fame, has just found out that the clock has struck midnight in her fairy tale, according to Shukan Jose. Or Jose. <coughs> and... Yes, uh, Tomomi Kahara, she debuted back in 1995. A um, little quick recap for those of you who might not be as familiar with Tomomi Kahara. Um, but yeah, she debuted back in 1995. Um, she was the it chick when she debuted. Um, she was backed by a um, very popular music producer um, named Tatsuya Komuro. And if you know anything about Japanese pop music, you probably would have heard that name. Um, so yeah, she was backed by some a major player in Japanese pop music. And as well, she was the rival to uh, Nami Amuro as well. And during her um, the height of her, of her career, like when she first debuted, she was kind of outselling Nami Amuro, you know. However, like, Tomi Kahara and TK, a.k.a. Tatsuya Kamuro, um, they began dating, and once the relationship ended, that's when things sort of took a turn for the worse. And I'll continue reading um, this article, and perhaps they'll touch on that a little bit within this article. <clears throat> and if they don't, um, I'll fill you in. So, let's continue. The 32-year-old singer variety performer has found her career in yet another crisis after she was asked by her talent agency last month and yeah when your talent agency fires you you know that is definitely you know a, you know that is a, definitely a red a red flag there <clears throat> all right Next, quote unquote, she canceled a rehearsal for a TV show on June 19th, pulled out of practice for a concert on June 20th, and then yanked the plug on a few scheduled radio appearances on June 21st. A reporter for a, new, a sports newspaper says, so apparently she had some events lined up and she was not performing. Well, she had these events lined up, but she didn't fulfill the, you know, her obligation to these events, you know. She had to do a rehearsal, she had to do a concert, then she had to do a radio appearance, she did not do those things. And you know, when you, especially when you're, like, especially when this talent agency is um, sending you out to do these things, um, when they're not done, it looks bad on the talent agency as well, not just the um, person but also the talent agency, because then the people are like, hey, what happened? You know, and it makes them um, less likely to use the talent agency again. <clears throat> Let's see. 
Next, quote unquote, that was the final straw for her agency and they sacked her soon after. So her agency fired her because she was not fulfilling her obligations to events that she signed up for. You know, that's fair, you know, to keep it real, that is fair. Let's see. Tomomi has not only lost her job, she also seems to have lost control of herself. Quote unquote, she's into drugs. Every time she has worries with her work or her love life, she starts popping all sorts of pills. Sleeping pills, tranquilizers, even cold medicine. She scoffs into the drugs like they're candies, a showbiz insider says. So to be fair, um, like possibly this is like being alleged. I'm not sure exactly what drugs are being used, but it has been um, kind of like reported throughout the years that Tomomi Kahara has had a battle with drugs, you know. And according to this showbiz insider, it's um, kind of like, you know, pills, like sleeping pills, tranquilizers. He even mentioned cold medicine. So she is like using this drug to self-medicate whenever things go wrong in her work or love life, you know. And it's strange because at one point she wasn't doing drugs, so it's kind of like where did it, where did it start? Was she introduced to drugs within the industry, or was it before she entered the industry? Let's see. Next, all the stuff she takes is legal, but she's addicted. She can't look you straight in the eyes, has trouble walking straight, and is often barely articulate. So, she. Kind of like probably taking, you know, over the counter, over the counter medication, possibly, or even prescription medication. It may be technically legal, but it may not be legal to abuse the substance in that way. And based on what he's saying, like she can't make eye can eye contact with people. She has trouble walking straight, and she's barely articulate. So I guess like she is just kind of like slurring her words just stumbling around can't look you straight in the eye and it comes off weird and it it's kind of like you feel like someone has an issue but in your position you may want to help that person but you can't help that person because you are not in the position to help that person you know it's like sometimes you can only help people by letting them fall you know, by just letting them, you know, continue to do what they do until they hit rock bottom. And hopefully when they hit rock bottom, it's not too late to get help, you know. <clears throat> Let's see. All right. Next. Tomomi, Tomomi made her debut in 1995, shortly after she was unveiled as the lover of music producer Tatsuya Komuro. Then reigning as the king of Japanese pop music and the young diva was hailed as his queen but when Tatsuya dumped Tomomi a few years later her fairy tale turned into a horror story so this is kind of like where I'm guessing they're saying like this is where things once that happened in her life that kind of triggered possibly the drug use <clears throat> Which, you know, personal events in people's life often can trigger substance abuse, unfortunately. Because people sometimes don't know how to handle emotional pain. So they kind of find a way to, like, self-medicate. <clears throat> Let's see. Next, she was rushed off to a hospital in an ambulance after being poisoned by gas from an oven. It was only the first of several series of bizarre attention-grabbing moments since listen she has since taken three long sabbaticals from work been hospitalized for an overdose of prescription medicine announced an impending marriage and then retracted the announcement moments later she eventually sought refuge with a long stay in canada hmm so 
when she was rushed off to the hospital because of the poison gas from the oven, I think that was like her trying to sort of, you know, take her own life, you know? From what I read before, they said, like people cited that as Tomomi trying to take her own life by kind of like poisoning herself with gas from an oven. Um, and some people view that as like just a ploy to get attention. You know, it's just her trying to get some attention, you know, which it could be both. You know, she could be trying to take her life and get some attention at the same time. Uh, I guess maybe, like, I don't know, maybe she's trying to call out for help, you know, with these, uh, with doing something like that. Um, and, you know, she has taken long breaks from work, I guess, trying to deal with her issues outside of, you know, you know, without having to deal with work and the issues, like take time off of work to deal with your issues, perhaps. And she's also been hospitalized for um, overdose of prescription medication as well. And she also has been like, she made some announcements like, oh, I'm getting married. And then a moment, few moments later, oh, I'm not getting married. So it seems like you can't, she might be trying to like, you know, get somebody's attention or get some attention, you know, for some reason. Because people in the industry, not every person, but I think people in the industry, as far as the entertainment industry, are sort of, you know, they live for the applause, if you will, you know. They want the attention. All right. Let's read on. Let's continue on to the next part. Tomomi had another sabbatical from December last year into until March, pulling out of a stage play, and had only just returned to work a couple of weeks before she was fired. So coming from a so let's see. She had a sabbatical from December to March. Let's see. Pulling out of a stage play and had only just returned to work a couple of weeks ago before she was fired. So it seemed like she's trying to be like maybe functional like a functional drug addict but it probably got to the point where she could no longer fulfill her obligations to work as feel it as well as fulfill her desire to the drugs you know let's see next she has also been in the care of the constabulary recently um, Quote unquote, she was found collapsed on the road in a drunken stupor in Nashi Azabu, the Tokyo district of Nashi Aba, uh, Azabu. Excuse me. One night, and the cops took her into their care before sending her off to a hospital for treatment. The sports newspaper writer says, "Quote unquote, in June alone, the cops picked her up." being drunk three times so that just in wow just in one month she was picked up like three times by the cops for being drunk in public you know it seems like you know at this point you know it seems like there's some issues here like some mommy's going through some things and she needs to get the help that she needs you know Let's see next it wasn't just drunkness Quote unquote, she was found staggering around one night with her hair all done up and decked out in a flashy dress like a nightclub hostess, but hadn't noticed one of her breasts. Well, they didn't use breasts, but uh, one of her breasts had popped out. <clears throat> the showbiz insider says, so she at one point she's drunk and she's like has a breast out too. So, you know, she's like, she it seemed like she has some sort of an issue, you know, some sort of a problem. Um, perhaps she doesn't know how to get help for this problem. Let's see. Toru Ogi, head of, pro of production Ogi, the talent agency that fired Tomomi, says he wanted to maintain their eight year relationship 
in trying to do so by making her sign a more <laughs> sorry memorandum that she would promise not to take too many prescription drugs. Just two months later, after she gave him the document, Tsumomi suddenly canceled the consecutive appointments and Oji had been through enough. All right, so um, the head of um, her talent agency, like he wanted to maintain their relationship. It seemed like they had like an eight year relationship. He wanted to maintain that. So then he was like, okay, just sign this document saying that, you know, you will promise not to take too many prescription drugs. To be fair, at that point, that should have been like a red flag to kind of not, not necessarily like sever this relationship, but maybe just like put, you know, their business relationship on like a hiatus until she got the help that she needed. And as well, I'm pretty sure that Tomomi was bringing them a lot of money too. You know, she was bringing in cash. So it was like, hey, yeah, you do probably want to continue to maintain this um, relationship, you know. But it's not good for you and it's not good for her. It's not good for your business because if she can't fulfill her obligations and come into, you know, her assignments drunk or high or whatever, then that's going to make you guys look bad. And then it's going to make her look bad. And then it's going to affect your money and her money. So it might be better just to not have even did that. Instead, it was just like, hey, um, unfortunately, we cannot represent you at this time because, you know, we feel that you are not in a healthy enough state to work for us, you know, and we even suggest that you you know seek out some help you know seek out some medical help you know <clears throat> with your addiction problem let's see and then two months later you know after she had signed that document then she was canceling appointments and then he had just been through enough at that point you know he wanted to try to hang on to this uh, relationship but really he probably should have just kind of like not cut the relationship but maybe just put the relationship on hiatus you know let's see quote unquote this is what he says <clears throat> I sacked her with her best interest in mind OG tells Shukain Jose she had been through, she had had problems with medicines before she joined our talent agency and we did everything in our power to avoid having to fire her she had always done what i told her up until now so dismissing her was really hard for me i hope firing Tomomi will in some way serve as a kind of shock therapy for her to get her life back in order again and you know he wanted again he wanted to maintain this relationship here but you know, unfortunately, I, I Tomomi, like some people can kind of be like a functioning drug addict, but I don't think Tomomi was at the point where she could be the functioning drug addict, which may possibly help her in the long run to not be able to be a functioning drug addict because then you, if you can't function, like, you know, do your work and then, you know, serve your addiction, then your life will fall apart to the point where you would just have to say, okay, I need to get some help, you know? And as I said previously, like he kind of said what I was saying, like he hoped in firing some Momi that it was serve as some sort of shock therapy for her to get her life back together, you know? And that's why I said sometimes you do kind of have to hit rock bottom sometimes to sort of say okay i need to like get myself together you know <clears throat> and that's pretty much the end of the article um you know but you know flash forward to you know 2016 um the current year tomomi has gotten her life together you know she is not that tomomi kahara anymore she has been able to get the help that she needs and find her way back into 
uh, the Japanese pop music industry as well. <clears throat> you know, and you know, those of you should kind of check out her. You know, it was kind of like somewhat of her comeback song, really. Um, it's called I Dreamed a Dream. It's kind of like a Japanese cover slash adaptation of the I Dreamed a Dream song from Le, Le Miserable. <clears throat> and I also did a lyrical analysis about it, but it really speaks to her life story. And she's singing really well in this song. And it's like, you know, it just captures her story really well, you know. And as well, she's singing the song really well. And it's like, you know, her comeback song, you know, her redeeming herself and getting back into the industry. You know, no, she's not as popular as she used to be, but at least she does have a space in the entertainment industry still, you know. And even if she didn't, as long as she got her life back together, that was like the real win. That would be the real win from the situation. But she was able to get her life back together and still have a space in the uh, Japanese music industry. So, you know, congratulations to Momi for getting your life back together. You know? And I will say, even her voice has seemed like it's improved, really. Um, I know some of her earlier work, it's really high pitched and sometimes it, um, it's a little uncomfortable for me to listen to some of her work from the early period of her career but I know like the later period like she seems to have really like honed her voice and the tone of her voice has lowered some which makes it um, easier on my ears and as well she has like you know improved as a singer too mm -hmm. right now she sort of does like cover albums more so lately she hasn't released any original material for the most part in years um, but she has done like three cover albums. I actually found out about her through her latest cover album, um, Memories 3, Tomomi Kahara Back to 1995, I think it's called. It's like Kahara Back to 1995. And that particular cover album, the theme of it is uh, songs released during her debut year, 1995. So she's covering like really popular songs released during 1995, which is her year of debut in the music industry <clears throat> but i think i'm going on for long enough um you know the part of the reason i wanted to make this video because no one has really been no one has really talked about this topic at least in the english language um usually the information i find is in the japanese language so part of the reason i did this video was because i want to share with um the english speaking population the story, you know, who may be interested in, you know, Tomomi Kahara, may be interested in uh, Japanese pop music in general, or just may be interested in her particular story, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, what do you guys think? Feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Your feedback and support are extremely appreciated and valued. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.